Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about the Tesla high power wall charger versus the NEMA 1450 outlet, so that conversation is coming up. So almost three and a half years ago, I did a video on this, and I figured let's go over it again in 2023 because things have changed since then. So I'm going to cut right to the chase and say that the NEMA 1450 is the better option in my opinion, but of course I'll go over why now. So back in 2018 when I got my Model 3, the mobile connector and the 1450 adapter came stock with the car. But as time has gone on, Tesla has slowly been nickel and diming, trying to save you know money where they can. So sometime in first quarter 2019, they stopped giving the 1450 adapter with the mobile connector. And then in April of 2022, they stopped giving the mobile connector altogether. So basically, if you bought a car after April of 2022, you're basically left with no way to charge your car if you just straight bought the car and that's it. Elon claimed on Twitter that they looked at data and nobody used the mobile connector and that most people who buy Teslas buy the high power wall charger as well. So they figured that it would be a waste of money to uh, include the mobile connector when nobody uses it. So even now in 2023, I still think the NEMA 1450 is the way to go even if you have to buy the mobile connector. So if we take a look at the website real quick, the mobile connector with the 1450 adapter costs $230 while the high power wall charger costs $350. For comparison, if you were to use the mobile connector, it gets you about 27 miles, 27 miles an hour on a Model Y, and it'll get you about 40 miles an hour on the uh, high power wall charger. So if you're in that camp that argues that the high power wall charger charges faster, yes, that's true, but who cares, and that is not relevant if you're charging overnight, and yeah, it'll take longer, but you're sleeping anyways, and so the car will get to the same place, just in a longer amount of time, but you're sleeping, so who cares? Also, technically, a slower level 2 charge is actually better for the battery. Trickle charge is the term that we use because the faster the battery gets charged up, the more, in theory, there's a chance that the battery will degrade faster. There's also that mobility factor. So it's called the mobile connector for something. So let's say you like road tripping or something or traveling and exploring, and say you get an Airbnb somewhere, you can filter on sites like that to you know, get places that have level 2 charging and you can bring your mobile connector with you and charge at your destination and you don't have to worry about supercharging somewhere on the road or you know near your destination. And even most garages these days have a 120 volt outlet, so if all else fails, you can at least charge at level one charging to get a little bit of juice overnight if you're staying somewhere. You obviously can't do this with the high power wall charger because it is mounted to your garage at your house and you can't take it with you. For me, there's two scenarios where the high power wall charger makes sense. One is for cool factor. So let's say you have a Tesla themed garage or you really like the look of the high power wall charger. If that's the case and you want that because it looks cool, then go ahead and get it and eat the cost. And two is if you have two Teslas. So if you have two Teslas, you can get two high power wall chargers. And if you hook them up to the same circuit, they're smart and they talk to each other. So basically if you had both uh, cars plugged in at once, they will, the, the connectors, the wall, wall chargers will talk to each other and basically they will distribute power based on the SOC state of charge of the two cars. And so obviously the lower charge car will get more power and that way they charge, you know, relatively fast sharing the same circuit. But in my opinion, I think this is kind of silly and a waste of money and not really necessary. So as an example, we have two Teslas. We have a Model 3 and a Model Y and we have one NEMA 1450 and it works perfectly fine for both our cars. Never had any issues with one plug and just being an outlet and not the high power wall charger. So how we make this work is I work from home and my wife works in the office. She has that type of job. And so basically I charge during the day while I'm here and then she charges overnight when she needs to. So it's pretty much like we have our own plug anyways and it's not an issue and it's really easy to charge two cars on one outlet. There's also the install factor. So for my NEMA 1450, it cost me $500 to get the outlet installed and ready to go. And basically you're gonna pay at least that if you put in a high power wall charger because you know they have to do the basically the same thing. They have to wire up the breaker from the, your sub panel or main panel and then you know bring the wires to wherever you want the charger or outlet. On top of that, the high power wall charger uses a 60 amp breaker whereas the NEMA 1450 uses a 50 amp breaker. 
So the higher the breaker, the thicker the gauge wire you need. So basically that means that it might actually cost you more to hardwire in a high power wall charger to, in order for it to be compliant and safe. And this is because thicker gauge wiring is really expensive. So basically if you're going to use, you know, 10 feet of say 10 gauge wiring and 10 feet of 8 gauge wiring, the thicker 8 gauge wiring is going to cost you more and the electrician might pass that cost on to you. So if you go the mobile charger route, you're saving at least $120 just on the EVSC, the electric vehicle supply equipment. And on top of that, depending on the electrician, they may charge you extra to mount the high power wall charger to your wall in addition to putting in the actual circuit for you. Whereas if it, if you get a NEMA 1450, they're not going to charge you to put in a outlet because that's just part of the whole process of getting a NEMA 1450 outlet. Put in the wiring to the breaker and then put in the outlet. It's like one step that's super easy after you put in all that equipment, all the wiring into the you know, wall in your panel. One last note is that if you put in a NEMA 1450 outlet, it's more versatile as well. So yes, you can charge it, you can charge your Tesla with your mobile adapter, but every other car out there mostly uses 1450s to charge their cars. So the ones I'm talking about are like Polestar, Rivian, any other car company that has EVs will use the J7, J1772 connector, which usually links up to your NEMA 1450. With the high power wall charger, you're only going to be able to charge Teslas because Tesla has their own proprietary plug. Unless you get the new J7, J1772 high power wall charger, which is more money, or you get a totally different wall charger be, to begin with. So I think this is more an educational thing for most people. I think the majority of people who buy Teslas don't even realize you can use the mobile connector to charge your car at home and have it work fine. I think a lot of people just automatically assume you need to buy a wall connector just because that's what Tesla pushes. And if you look on their website when you're you know buying a car, that's the first charging accessory you see is the wall charger. So if you have a Tesla or are planning to get one, which side are you on? Are you going to get a mobile charger or are you going to get the Tesla high power wall charger? Let me know in the comments and thanks for watching.